Okay, good evening. Um, this is the New Bain Select Board meeting tonight, um, July 6th at 6 p.m. And for the first time in a long time, we are meeting in person again. Uh, we are wearing masks, and that was the agreement we made in order for the video um, processing to, can take place. So when somebody is speaking, please remove your mask the way I did just now. When you finish speaking, please put the mask on. That was our agreement. So um, I'm calling the meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is additions or amendments to the agenda. Anybody who has something? No, I'd like to make an addition, I guess. I meant to, and then as far as the court affirms town's order to demolish unsafe buildings, is that on the agenda? Um, you know what? I think that we were going to talk about that for next the, time. It was going to be under possible projects? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, don't have a motion for that. No motion. Okay, here we go. We're up to approval of minutes, and we have three sets of minutes. The first one is May 18, amended minutes. And we need to approve that. Is there a motion to I, approve? I make a motion to approve the May 18, 2020 amended minutes. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. The eyes appear to have it, and so the minutes are approved. The next set of minutes is from the June 15th regular meeting, which still was on Zoom. I have a motion for I second. Okay. Any uh, comments, questions? I would like to make one with the uh, May 18th on here. It says table to amend it. I would just like to make a comment that. Um, what you did, Moneta, was very good about the correspondence sentence. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, for June 15, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Okay. You abstain. Okay. The ayes do have it, and so the minutes are approved. The next and last set of minutes was for June 22nd, and that was a special meeting. And um, does anybody make a motion? A motion. A motion. I'll second. Okay. And I will tell you what that motion was about. Not the motion, I'm sorry. The meeting was to take a vote and decide which. Uh, body of law enforcement we would be hiring for the year. And the vote was taken to have these uh, Vermont State Troopers as our law enforcement. And so that passed. And that was the meeting. And the meeting lasted about 15 minutes. And we had a uh, very quick approval for a liquor uh, control license after that. So. All favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Okay, thank you. So those minutes pass and we're finished with the minutes. The next item on the agenda is the road foreman's and road commissioner's report. And Jay Wilson, can you give us your sure. report, please? Um, I met with Scott Jensen, the river engineer at the Monroe Bridge, to discuss the work to be to remove the gravel bar and the, the uh, protection of the abutment footings. Um, we're developing a scope of work for that project, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have something on that. Um, the following day we met again on Upper River Road for bank stabilization, uh, Wiswald Hill for a possible flood mitigation, um, which is kind of elaborate, but I'll, he suggested that I'm gonna proceed and just see what's involved with it. Um, basically, the, the little stream runs really tight to Wiswell Hill, and when every time the water comes up, it kind of eats a little more of it. But to fix it, he wants to do a whole flood table thing on the opposite side of it and 
it, it's, it'll be fairly elaborate, so we'll see if, if there's money to pay for it, and then it's fine. If there's not, then we'll try another route. Um, and then we went to South Wards Road where the trees toppled into the brook, and that site he thinks we can leave for the time being unless further problems develop. Um, we've poured more concrete uh, cement culvert headers and they're continuing culvert replacement. The depot road culvert easements have been drawn up by Bob Fisher and are being reviewed by the state right away people. The sand salt shed engineer is up to date with the plans and they're back in the state's hands for review. Uh, the safety and hazardous materials plan for the garage is almost complete. Once completed, we'll be having trainings on the plan. Um, and Daniel's construction bid for the mineral bridge was approved by Mark from VTrans, and the work should be starting in about a month. And thank you, Jay, for your report. Um, are there any questions? Uh, can somebody uh, make a motion? Make a motion to approve it. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions for Jay or Chris? Chris, do you have anything to add? Thank no. you all for all your hard work, especially because of the so well out there. Okay, great. Okay, so all those in favor of accepting the road foreman and road commissioner's report, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nobody. So thank you, Jay. Your minutes have been brief. Um, accepted and thank you and Chris for, and the guys on your crew for all the work they do. I get constant compliments about um, the conditions of the roads. Yeah, I was up in another town the other day over the weekend and I was visiting somebody and he said, oh, the roads here, they take good care of the roads in this particular town that he lives in. And when I was driving back, this is nothing like New Fame. New Fame is really unbelievable how well you take care of everything. And so we all thank you. Okay, next item is Treasurer's Report. Melissa, and there are quite a few things that you want to talk about tonight. Okay. Um, my monthly reporting for Beamers in the state of Vermont has been completed. My quarterly reporting for quarter two has been completed for the Department of Taxes, Beamers, Department of Labor, and IRS. Um, I've completed the July 1st change in payroll for the Beamer rates. The rates changed for both employee and employer. The rates went from 5.125 to 5.35 for the employees, and the employer portion went from 5.75 to 6%. I've completed the year and closing the books and have been preparing for today's audit. The bank reconciliations have been caught up to May. I'm waiting on June's and I will complete June's once it's received. Okay. And I have the bids for town properties. I have a question. Oh, one second. Okay. Um, should we remove <coughs> your minutes, I think, before we go further? Sure. Um, so first, um, may I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. So oh, second. Okay, Shelley, you have a comment? Or yes, a my comment is on the VMER Beamers. I know you know what that is, <laughs> but what is that? Vermont Municipal Employee Retirement. Okay, so what I would suggest is at least putting that down somewhere and then doing in brackets yep. so that everybody else knows what it is. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, any further comments? So all those in favor of accepting Melissa's treasurer's report, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great, thank you. Your um, report is approved and you'll go on with the bids now. Would you like to explain what they are for before you, we open them? Uh, these are all the town properties, four of them that were for sale. So. I don't know if you guys want me to open them, or you guys want to open them, or? Mike, you want to open them? You can do it. You, yeah, just separate them by property, and you open up the <coughs> long thing, and then we both on them, right? Well, she may not know which ones they should be. She knows who they are anyway, so. Yeah. All right, so, huh? Open them, please. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's see them out. 
All right, this one is for F131, which is off on Depot Road. All right, this is to whom it may concern. This letter is to inform you that Brian Madison is an account holder in good standing. Um, at Trustco Bank. He currently holds an open account for the funds available of at least $2,251,000. If you require any further information, call. I guess that's his bid. Did you have a bid sheet for them? Uh, I guess this is, no, I just told him to write something up, but I guess this is it. He just put the map in there. And I bid $2,251. Okay. How much? $2,251. So the taxes are all done. It's like 18. I don't have that. It was like 823 yeah. yeah. The minimum bid. That was like two weeks. Yeah, two acres. 131? Yep. Yeah, so that one, the minimum bid was 1823 and change. Yep. Where is that? I believe that's the only that's one. Oh, yeah, second one. Yep. Yeah. And, and his. Yeah, that's the only one I got on that one. That's the only one I got on that one. Okay. I wonder if reading all of them and then yeah, and then voting as one. Right. All right. The next one is from Manuel Bosch. I, Manuel Bosch, wish to bid on the property located at 1134 South Wardsboro Road in Newfane in the amount of $301.78 to be paid in cash. <laughs> okay, that's not going to cover it. Um, yeah. <laughs> How much was loaded on that one? $7,322.72 mm. for 1.25 acres. Yeah, I think people got scared on that one because it wouldn't perk at one point. It says in the deed that it won't perk. Okay, so that one might be a little problem. All right, and then I have two for the one out on Cranston. Uh, did you say Hunter Brook? Cramp, Cramp, Cramp Road. Cramp Road. That's off of Baker Road? Yeah, off Green Road. I, Dylan Petit, hereby submit this bid of $10,300 for parcel ID C108. What's the name again? Dylan Betit, B E T I T. 10,300? Yep. Minimum bid was 4,500. Gross. Mm Peter Green, bid of $7,013 for C108. So which one? Same one. Same one. Same one. Same one. Same one. Parcel number one. $7,000 how much? $13. I'm assuming that's what that is. Melissa, repeat the price, please. Yeah, $7,013. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. That's it. Okay. Nothing for Hunter Brook Road? Nothing for Hunter Brook Road. So I would assume that um, the first one we have two bids, the one is for ten thousand three hundred dollars mm -hmm. on a at sixteen cramp lane in Williamsville. The next one is seven thousand thirteen dollars. Mm -hmm. So I assume that we are taking the highest bid for that. Correct. Do we need a motion? Yeah, that one there, they're responsible for having him removed up for mm -hmm. Yep. Property sold as is. I don't think we need to make a motion. No. So I assume uh, you said, say the name again, Betty? Dylan Petit. Dylan Petit. Okay. Does say select, select board's acceptance of a bid? Yes. Well, we're accepting the bid. Are we accepting the bid? Do you want? Well, one thing I've got to say is, 
the town of Newfane owns that parcel. Well, not now. Yeah. The town of Newfane should have had that lane cleared off before they put it up for sale. With the guy off it, I mean. Yes. I asked Bob Fisher about that, so we didn't have yeah. to. I know, but I don't know. They accept it as. That's why I heard a couple people didn't want to bid on it because of that, too. Yeah, me too. You know, they didn't want to bid on it because of, um, they know this guy is going to be a real problem. Yeah. And I just can't imagine the town would send a liability like that onto somebody else. But the point is, is that whoever bid on it knew that. So it's not really, you know, a concern actually, because our liability is gone with the, the sale. So are we approving the higher bid of 10300 for that property, 16 Cramp Lane? I well, that'd be the one I approved. Now, do we have to give the remainder from the what's owed to back to the landowners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the landowners are town of Newfane. That's your son. Because <laughs> 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 it was sold a year ago. Well, town, I think town ended up with it. What happens, I think, a year ago, part of that said it's pretty tricky laws on some of this stuff, is a year ago when it was sold, they had a year to redeem it. They didn't. Right. And they didn't do it. And now it doesn't mean that they still don't own the land. It's just that the town has a right to go in and sell it now. Right. And I still think if it had brought a hundred thousand dollars, I think that land would have to go back to the the owner. And that's what yeah. I had I even had her ask Bobby and that's what I told her. I said, Well what happens with the extra money? And I think it goes back to the property. The only thing we can take is our taxes. Bob said to send it back to the owner. Is that your understanding too, Carol, of the law? Oh, if, if Bob says that, you have to go. Well, he's a lawyer, Bob. Yeah, he's I, would, a lawyer. I would have thought that once he didn't redeem it, if you sold the property, you owned the property, and if you sold it for more than the well, tax says you got it. But if Bob says no, then like I, I, said, mean, I know that's how it works with the, uh, with the um, if you sell it at a tax sale for more than the taxes then the difference goes to the owner. But this is not a tax sale. This is a property sale. This is a property sale. The town bought it for the amount of the taxes. So yeah. this is sort of a little different, I would have thought. Gloria? Is the deed in the town's name? Yep. Yes. So yeah. therefore, the town owns it. Yeah. So that's the idea. I don't know. I had her asking there about this about when the first all come up. That's what I say, because the way I look at this thing is the first time around, they got a year to redeem it. And whoever buys it for that tax, they get paid their interest and all that stuff on this land. The second time around, doesn't mean the guy still don't own the property, is that... Um, well, it's been transferred. It's been transferred. He does not own the property. The town owns it. It's not a tax sale. It's I don't know. Do whatever you guys want. You can keep it or not, but I just... I mean, that's what she asked, and he said we'd have to give the extra money. You know, the auditor said that, depending on the attorney you asked also, because I talked to him today about this situation, and he said that it might differ from attorney to attorney. So, well. I know, the town's not supposed to make a profit either. They're, they're not supposed to. The town's not supposed to be making profits off stuff, so I don't know. The also, one on Depot Hill Road, we got more on that one, but the guy's passed away. So I have to do a due diligence and just contact the courthouse make sure there's no probate and then we do keep that excess money well i think the fact that all of these properties are sell with quick claim deeds yeah. also makes a difference yeah. no it does not why it doesn't matter what kind of deed you're giving that's that's but it says that the, that the seller is not going to be responsible once it once it's sold by quick claim Deed, sorry. Uh, the seller of that property. Right, but that doesn't have anything to do with the money that they're paying. No, no, I know, but in terms of what Michael said, that, that they were yeah. cleaned or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're accepting that with a quick claim deed, you're buying it as is mm -hmm. with no, um, right. you know, nothing. Well, anyways, I'd make a motion to accept the highest bidder and check with our attorney and see what he recommends at that point. 
Okay. So, oh, sorry. My other thought is also if our attorney, um, you've asked, mm -hmm. he's given a reply. Yep. That if we contacted VLTC. VLTC. Yeah. For a second opinion. Is it VTLC? VLTC. 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 For just the second opinion, they may say because it's already in the attorney's hands, they wouldn't be able to respond to it. But uh, I, well, I, I mean, we we have our relationship with Bob Fish and we trust him and we pay him. Right. right? So why would we have to go to somebody else? Well, it just seems that, excuse me, we yes. have a motion on the floor. We need a second before the discussion. discussion. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Renata, for keeping us in line. Thank Continue you. discussion. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. I think we have to rely on our attorney. I think so. It's a good idea. Right. So are we approving the higher bidders, the higher bid, which is ten thousand three hundred? This guy is related bid. to the guy by chance, maybe. What? The ten thousand? No. Mm -hmm. no. No. I didn't know maybe one of the family members stepped in, paid it, and. That would be a lot easier. But they didn't want to. They didn't want to deal with their own kid. No, they've done too many times. They've done too many times. Every time they live in the town yard. Joey J, yeah. I think we'd better uh, vote yeah. on this. So all those in favor of accepting the higher bid of 10300 for the property at 16 Cramp Lane, Williamsburg, please say aye. 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 Okay, and you oppose? No. So, so that is so. Thank you. Uh, the next <clears throat> land piece of land was on Depot Road, and the minimum bid was eighteen thousand twenty-three dollars and fifty-seven cents. How much was it? No, no. Thousand, thousand, eight hundred. I mean, eight, excuse no. me. One thousand eight hundred and twenty-three. <laughs> oh, what's the, what's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Wrong, wrong, I'm wrong. Okay. Um, and there was a bid that was higher than that for $2,251. Mm -hmm. I think we should accept that. Second. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor say aye. I just have a aye. discussion. Oh, yeah, they want a discussion. Where the heck is that piece of property? That's down off from Station Road. Road. Station Road? Yeah, you know how Stony Hall is down on Route 30? Yeah. And then if you take Depot Hill Road and go yeah. up, it's that first little private oh. road down there. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually the neighbor that connects to this property that oh, belongs to well, okay. Oh, good. Okay. Because I sent everybody, all the neighbors, to all the properties. That's great. Right. Good. Okay. And then... So Where's where we're going to take a vote? And, yeah, we're taking a vote. I thought we did that. All those in favor of selling the property for 2251, please say aye. 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 Okay. And no opposition, so that is sold. Sure. Very good. And the last parcel was 1134 South Wardsboro Road. Yep. Minimum bid was $7,322.72. And we didn't get that. <laughs> no. $301.78. Right. Where right. is this property? Just way out on South Wardsboro Road. Way up, almost the town line. Mm -hmm. Right in the swamp. Who's the guy bid on it? Manuel Bosch. Who is he though? Is he a lane up in Butter? No, he lives down here. Um, yeah. Behind uh, the old auction house. I'd make a motion as long as we didn't get the bid to hang on to it for right now. Yeah. The problem with this property is it won't perk. What does that mean? Well, like I said, that's why you I asked if he's a budding landowner. Uh -huh. That's why I said you want to know if he's a budding landowner. If he's a budding landowner, if they're hooked to another parcel. I actually notified all the budding owners of it, yeah. too. And there was no response? No response. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did they change that, some of the regulations since that was done here, possibly? Well, they have made it a lot easier on septics and stuff for different things. They have septic more of a like wetland areas and you know, water areas or whatever, you know. 
I mean, for three hundred dollars, I think I'd keep it for right now. Well, I think because it didn't meet the minimum bid, we couldn't sell it. Right. So that passes. Yes. Right. Pass it. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much, Melissa, for taking care of all of that. Sure. And we have two of them that have sold. That's great. Okay. Um, Melissa, you also have another issue, and that is a search for a bank statement right in the Um, Well, I gave you guys all the copies there, but I didn't come to you Sierra Pratt was interested in the bank reconciliation. Give me a take off your mask when you speak to the bank. Sierra Pratt was interested in the bank reconciliation position. Yeah. Um, I just spoke to Melissa before the meeting started to find out when the next reconciliation paperwork has to be done, and that's in August. You're working on the July one. I'm going to do the June one when it comes in, just to get it done for Jordan, the mm -hmm. auditor. Right. So you need somebody by August. And um, my suggestion is that I know that I was asking around, you were asking people, Vanetta was asking people. Um, I happened to be here last week, and Melissa and I were talking about it. Sierra was here, and she asked about it, and she was very interested. And of course, I told her that um, this has to come before the board. But she is the only one who has expect, <laughs> expressed interest. And she spoke a lot about her experience with math, with reconciling not just her own um, bills and statements, but she was in, um, her husband was in the army, mm -hmm. and she did a lot of work for them. And it sounds like she's very qualified to do it. She understands that it is um, a fee of fifty dollars. And Melissa thinks that once somebody knows the job, it can be done in about an hour. And I made it very clear to her that um, in addition to having to have math skills, that it's very, very important that it's done on time and handed in on time. And uh, the auditor was here today. And I think that um, he mentioned that we would we really need to get somebody as soon as possible to fill this. So I'd like to know um, if anybody would like to make a motion. I'll make a motion to accept it. I'll second. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. To fold the discussion. That's not the motion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's one. Well, I just, I mean, I just got this today, just at the meeting, and I don't see any bookkeeping experience um, in her resume. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all um, childhood assisting mm -hmm. provider skills. Um, so I would make a recommendation that we post it for a job and see what else, who else we can get. Because if you don't have the accounting um, head, you know, uh, experience, this is like talking Greek to somebody sometimes. Well, I can tell you that in my conversation, in Melissa's conversation with her, we were here by ourselves and we spoke for quite a long time and Melissa told her exactly what the job is. And she has done that kind of work in terms of uh, reconciling. It's and nice. she also would have to have an interview with her, with us. We would be. What we are voting on today is to see if we are interested enough to meet with her, and then you can ask her all those questions. Um, that's fine, except I would open it up to other people. Well, we have been. Right. We've, we've been oh, I haven't advertised that. I don't know if you guys want to put it in paper or... Well, what does it cost to put it in the paper when I have? Depends on the... Depends on the size of the block. It could be anywhere from thirty dollars up to eighty dollars. Okay. Yes, Angela. I'd like to hear from Melissa on her thoughts about when you guys are talking, how you feel about it. 
She seems to be a quick learner. She, I mean, she's always consistent. She shows up when she's supposed to. She said that her mother and her sister have done accounting work, so she's not like, not used to it. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't you know. It's a big responsibility where, you know. I don't think it's rocket science, really. It's just kind of checking off, you know. I hate to say that, but. Well, that's my, my opinion is that it's dealing with a million dollar plus budget. There's access to our files. We need somebody who can. Well, she wouldn't really have access to, or nobody would have access to like the accounts or anything like that. It's mostly the reports and the recons. And that's it. She wouldn't be able to make changes or do things in or out, nothing like that. Still, so like probationary period. Well, what about after her interview, interview and, and then, then see? Wasn't there somebody else that might have been interested? No. They declined. Oh, okay. It's up to you guys. I mean, it's technically you guys that hired them. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, I don't see any accounting in this. That's why we, if, if we meet with her, she can explain it to you. And then we, we are not live, we're not um, forced to hire her, but I totally understand your concerns. She did go into that conversation with Melissa and I. I don't know why it's not here. But she's the one and only person so far who is interested and is apparently a very responsible person who does things on time, which is a major issue of why we're actually looking for somebody more. Mm. So I would like to know if anybody- May uh, I amend the emotion that I made and amend it to invite her for an interview at our next meeting and go from there? Is that her favorite view, Mike? I'll second that. Okay, is there a second to that motion? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. I think that we can have her come here and meet with us at the next meeting. Uh, I'd like to take a vote if there's no other conversation. So the motion is to have um, Sierra come to our next meeting, which is on July 20th. And Melissa, if you wouldn't mind being the person to let her know, contact her and say the select board would like to have an interview with her. Sure. Why don't you have? I'm sorry. What? Why don't you have Lynetta do that? Because that's more being requested for the select board. So wouldn't Lynetta contact her? And... Oh, I'm sorry. If you want to, it can be Lynetta. I'm sorry. I'm that's saying okay. Because Melissa knows us. Oh. No, I, I understand. But... Okay. How about if Lynetta contacts her? Is that okay? Perfect. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Nay. So you don't want her to be into, you're voting against interviewing her. Correct. Right. Okay. Now I just want to make clear. I have the choice. No, of course you do. <laughs> I just want to make sure that well, I know what I'm talking about. I have, a choice, about. That I have yeah. a choice whether or not we should spend our time yeah. Interviewing somebody who doesn't have well, I you, it doesn't yeah. hurt your people chance, you know. You <clears throat> see what they do have to say. Then. Okay, the eyes have it, and uh, we will be interviewing her if she is still available and interested. Thank you. Okay, we are moving on. There's one more treasurer's issue. Oh, yes, on, on the folder in front of the pencil. This one, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> There's a municipal checklist for internal control, part one, cash control. And it's a report that Melissa went through and it needs to be signed by a select board chair. So if I can pass it around, you can look at it if you want to, or just approve that I can sign it. And where does it go? Back to the auditors, is that correct? Yeah, I'll pick it up or look at it in August when it comes back out. Okay. Is there anything on there that is, I know there were a couple things that they were looking at. I flagged a couple things that I didn't know the answers to on there, so you might want to look at them. I don't know what page it was on or did I write it on the front? 
But I know it's a, it's a lot better than it has been in the past. The yeah. operational, you know. Yeah, that's pretty much standard, that whole internal control thing. Every year we have to do one. Right, right. But I'm saying there's there were recommendations like the reconciliation being done on a timely basis. I think that report stated that. Well, I think that's one of the questions in there that I might have left blank for you guys to fill in. Mike, do you want to see that? Nothing. Yeah. Um, so the question is, please put this on the agenda. Page four signed. and five has a question. <clears throat> Does the town have a policy regarding the use of wire transfers? Um, do we need to have a policy for that at this point? Does anyone ask for it, the ACH transfers? And we do the EFTPSs and all those. And wire transfers are extremely different. Wire transfers. So I don't know. You guys There's federal policies. regulations involved yeah. through the banking. I mean, we have, we've never done it before. We don't do wires. I would recommend not doing it. And does the town have a policy regarding who can approve and execute wire transfers? So if we don't have them, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a no to know then. Yeah. Our electronic banking transfer is done exclusively from an off network computer. That's not checked. Off network would be. No, uh, there's a network system. Can you use monitors? Chris, are you all right? Yeah, I hope you're going to get this thing off the face. Oh, okay. I didn't even say what I was doing. <laughs> no, he wants some water. Oh. Well, a, net, a network usually, I think, pertains to if you have your own network, but we're working off of a service. Server network or something. Yeah. yeah. So that's like a question you would ask what two wire guys, right? Is that when we get our service through? I think it's on the network. We're all right. Right. All of our computers, except the public one, are, is a network. We have a network. Now, right. she's been working on the cloud. Yeah. For the um, no. for the uh, network stuff. Now. Yeah. Because she was working from home, and uh, but it is it is all network, and it's saying not a it are any of them a non-network, right? Um, she doesn't have any work being done by a non-network computer. Okay. And also there's another, I see a blue light. Has the town established a anymore? policy regarding unrestricted fund balances? Yeah, I don't have the policies. That's why I left a lot of those blank because I don't know where the policies are. You don't know where the policies are? Yeah, I think you guys have them on there. I don't know. So I guess maybe we need to get the policies together. Uh, yeah. You should have them. <coughs> in the book? Bless you. Huh? Uh, you should ask me. We have a great big book of policies and stuff that's involved, and I don't know if. When does this need to be done? <coughs> June 30th. June 30th? Yeah. No, August 17th. Oh, okay. So I'd say I would make a recommendation to the board that we um, get the policies together, the financial policies, so that um, we're tightening up our financials and having, meeting the requirements. A motion. I make a motion that we do that. Second. Any discussion? There's a policy book. If we have one, then we can work off of that. I guess Bonnet is looking to see if he might mm -hmm. have something. I have a sign. I'll get in touch with him and drop him off or whatever. Then we should probably consider it for the next meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't take it today, so. Okay. So we'll figure out if we have the policy. If we don't, 
If we do, we'll look at what we're going to call the Since it's a motion, we'll second. To continue it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait to see if we're going to have that. I'm picking up the knot. I mean, there's a financial policy that it's not required. Yeah, Mike, are you the one who made the motion? Do you want to repeat what the motion is? I think pretty much we're going to take a look at the next meeting to get this off. Okay. So, um, all those in favor of postponing, accepting the municipal checklist for internal control, please say aye. aye. And it will be aye. aye. No, the next meeting, which is July 20th. Aye. Is anybody? Aye. Okay. Okay, so the eyes have so, it, and Melissa, we'll give this back to you. Sure. And then I think maybe VLTC might have some information that we could work off of. No, I think it's one of you guys have the policies here. I just need mm -hmm. to know. Okay. One other thing. I, I think the only thing you would have to review would be to decide not to accept the wire transfers. It has balanced budgets. It has capital. It has investment policies, but it does not include wire transfers, uh, which was the main topic of your discussion. Yeah. Hmm. So then, I think I think that uh, we should have a booklet for um, you to have access to to refer to. I mean, there's the main one, but the bigger final copy. Just that she knows where it is. Well, we just made the motion and it's up. Yep. So we're not going to add to the motion. No, nope, unless I want. No, I was just at this time. No, no. Okay. So, and we voted on it that we're waiting until mm -hmm. next week. Next meeting. Okay. <clears throat> uh, administrative assistance report, please. Winnetta. Nancy Burke did the water testing for the town office. The, revolt, the results have been completed. There are currently no bacteria present. The lead and copper levels are below allowable limits. To remove the sulfur smell might be more expensive to install and maintain than just continuing to buy the water, <clears throat> buy the bottled water. Mm -hmm. okay. Vermont leaks of cities and towns weekly Legislative report number 25 shows that we will be focusing on law enforcement reform in August. This is caused from the protests that followed George Floyd's murder. It is something that will affect all of us for some time. For those who wish to follow this bill, the fall reference is S.219, and I'll be watching that as well. <coughs> Okay. Motion to accept the report. Please say aye. I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second. Aye. 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 Okay. Any comments or questions? Well, my, my question, comment is that um, I know there are some computer issues happening on June 22nd or something. I mean, I, so I'm wondering if those issues got resolved. Um, I believe an email was sent out saying they were resolved. I didn't get it. I mean, I know that um, one editor was having a hard time opening, getting emails off the computer or something. Um, and I mean, this is all that's happened is just these two things since then. I mean, it's just kind of a small report. Well, first of all, uh, one editor had health issues and she um, took her uh, sick leave days and her private day, personal right. days, right. to address her health issues. So, so when she's out, is there anybody else that's able to handle anything? Or I can work remotely only with access to what's on the computer. We did have Southern Vermont Cable come down and change the router. I understand there still needs to be an additional one purchase to allow for the amount of hookups that we need. Yeah. <clears throat> I have not taken care of that as, as of yet. Um, and my computer issue 
I did talk to two wired guys and we have added the administrative assistance computer to a monthly maintenance and yeah. that increased our bill by I think forty mm -hmm. yeah. and it's almost fifty dollars. Almost fifty dollars for the addition. Will he do it or he he'll he, come he'll he, come in on it and do it, right? I or allow him access to the yeah. computer remotely. Because of the volume of um, stuff you're doing, it needs to clean up more often. And Have I you seen it. a difference since it started? Um, it's it's been minimal what I have seen, but I am getting the emails more frequently than what I have. And I know that the town clerk's office had issues with the same email sending and receiving. Who's the service with? Yes, yeah, the email, are, we get things through Southern Vermont Cable. And uh, so our email problems are with Southern Vermont Cable, not yeah. anything here in the office. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, because uh, today Consolidated um, had a massive um, failure through the whole state of Vermont. Oh, so everybody was affected. Well, Southern Vermont Cable on a personal level has not been 100% either because that's what I have at home and it's not been. Yeah, I, I didn't get emails for three days and then all of a sudden I got lists and lists of emails yeah. and it happens quite yeah. frequently. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if um, you thought about changing the um, service? Well, it is going to be turned. Yeah, I don't know what the label is selling. Yeah, I and think that's they... going to happen within a month or so. Because I've just had them to my house three times in one week. It's Comcast, right? Comcast? Yes, yeah, Southern Comcast. Comcast. Versus Consolidated Services. Consolidated Services. Right. Mm -hmm. No, no. Uh, there was somebody on the front porch forum that said they working with Consolidated for three weeks and never got a response. My system went down and it was going to be two weeks before somebody could come out and so I changed to Southern Vermont Cable. Right. So consolidated. Mm -hmm. I have well, I would like to um, stay with uh, discussing the administrative system report and ask so that we can move on. Well, I hope you're well. <clears throat> and I appreciate all of your efforts that you do. Thank you. And I do feel that whether Bonetta's report is two paragraphs or a lot more, just looking at everything here on the table is an indication of all the things that Winetta is involved with and does during the week. Well, my question is really about if what is coming in and if we're getting the information, you know, requests and things like that. What well, it's all on here. Yeah. I mean, this is what she does during the week. Right. Or two weeks, she does a lot of work in different areas. She also works with um, Melissa at times. And uh, I mean, I'm here a lot. I've never come in here and not seen Winetta busy with something. She's always busy. Well, it's not. I'm not saying that she's not busy. <laughs> I'm just asking what she is doing as far as, you know, um, overall, you know, just a couple of paragraphs. Um, I know that she has to put the meeting together um, but is there anything else that's coming up or being? Um, you know? well, I think our agenda says it all. Yeah, I mean it's a pretty full agenda of things that she's organizing for us to talk about throughout the meeting. So I think that's and she's not only um, writing an agenda; she's involved with all of these issues that come in. Mm -hmm. So, um, any other comments? All those in favor of accepting Renetta's report, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Renetta. Thank you. Um, scheduled members of the public, Gloria Cristelli, nice to see you here. Thank you, Gloria. Hi. And you may take off your mask when you're speaking. When I'm speaking, but I'll hand you some things first. If you want to. This if you don't want to, that's fine. Last page. 
You know what I don't recommend? We're gonna keep having these damn masks on. Let's get some ventilation in this place. Let me turn this down. I'm getting things hot. Um, we're not as hot as it does. We're not as talking about. Oh, either on the door or something. That's an air for this place. Face masks. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. The clear face masks. Yes. I ordered shields for next meeting, so you don't have to wear these. It'll be just a, a headband with clear. I'm not even too fond of any of that. So. Erica from the library got some of those to clear ones. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of She's over there. Yeah. They have a yeah. Oh, they have a Okay, Gloria's going to give her presentation. Oh, what is that? Oh! Yeah. Good. You brought that last year. <laughs> <laughs> Except I bought, brought the actual, not the rice. Yeah, you brought the stock. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot how to really make salad. Or you can ask. Do you? Well, I have. I said you use it for salad. I put this presentation together because New Fame financially is going to be affected by this Japanese knotweed. And so the first one, um, I was at WW and talking to Ed, as I was trying to find some mesh, wire mesh, to start a project that the Southeastern Vermont Watershed Alliance is doing this summer. And we happened to look over and see that you have, we have, um, the town of Newfan has not we growing right on your reach field to the town office. And so I went online and found this little comment about what trees are safe to plant near a drain field, and a drain field really is a leach field to us. And it says that few trees are safe to plant near the septic system drain fields, also called leach fields. A drain field is a system of below ground pipes that connect to the septic tank and are usually buried to a depth of at least six inches. Deep and vigorously rooting trees, and I'm going to put in parentheses and not weed, can damage the drain field pipes, especially trees like beeches, elms, etc. And then I put an asterisk and I, whoops, I, I lost the asterisk, but the rhizomes of the Japanese knotweed right underneath the paragraph says, has been documented to extend 23 feet horizontally and 10 feet deep. Quote, and that's quoted from the article that's on page three of this document. So I took pictures of the knotweed growing. And so your first two pictures are the knotweed infestation on our leach field. And this says nothing about the fact that we have knotweed just growing rampantly down Smith Brook. So that's a cause of concern for the erosion of the bank. Speaking of erosion, Jay when we talk about that, and also the spread opportunities for this knotweed. So the second page has the two additional pictures of the leach field. And so what I'm going to be suggesting in this is that the town of Newfane needs to do something about getting rid of it, or it's going to cost us replacing probably a leach field. And that is of concern. And Sevla might be here to help, which is the Southeastern Vermont Watershed Alliance. On the page three, this is from a different state, but from the Marin Knotweed Action Team and frequently asked questions. And so the third I put it in um, bright red so we can see. It says that knotweed grows through street pavement, concrete, and other hardscapes, including sidewalks, streets, home foundations, septic systems, and a variety of driveway hardscapes, thus negatively affecting property values. Now, at this point in Vermont, I've talked to insurance agents, <coughs> 
New Fane insurance agent and a couple of realtors. We don't at this point have the property value implication yet. I do know that somebody on Back Street said that they got their property cheaper because it had a knotweed infestation. And so I think at some point we might be the same as England is, where if you've got knotweed on your property, you're, you, essentially your value just mm -hmm. completely goes down. And so it's something to think about. I see knotweed growing between and right behind um, Union Hall, and that's going to go right into the foundations. And so I put an asterisk after that comment to say this will cost me any money for infrastructure maintenance, like mm -hmm. bridges, culverts, and roads. Mm -hmm. So then to see Newfane in all its glory, uh, I happen to go up Wiswall Hill Road every day. And so I drive past this, so I stopped and looked. On the, you see the knotweed is growing up on the bridge on the side. Mm -hmm and see below with, and then I apparently did something. But if you look on the bottom where I put the bright yellow arrow, you're going to see that the knotweed is actually growing right up through the pavement. And I gave the picture uh, to, and what did you call those? Uh, it's not the foundation, but it's the abutment, or whatever it is. So the knotweed, is growing on the far side of the bridge up to the abutment. Any crack in the cement will provide opportunity for it to grow mm -hmm. and to destroy that part of it. So then if we go here to Grimes Hill Road on the next page, you're gonna see that the if you go by it right now, Jay has, has cut it and I have uh, Corey Stark coming down on Wednesday, we're going to truck all the knotweed up to my place where I dry it and burn it. But then we'll start, hopefully, and I'll show you the project that I'm working on. So here you can see the top right picture shows and, and how it overgrow, would normally overgrow right there around the curve, it's dangerous. And then you'll also see that it's sneaking up on the pavement again. And when it goes down up to 10 feet and the rhizomes go 23 feet in any direction, it will come up through any crack. So it's not something to be ignored. Thanks to whoever in England brought it over to the States, I mean, from Japan to England and England to the States. And I have begun uh, and have grant money through the Southeast Vermont Watershed Alliance. So I said to Jay, I don't have a whole lot of mesh. We had a hard time getting mesh at the beginning, but on South Wordsboro Road, a little before Archer's place on the right, we've got that overweight sign. And so normally the knotweed just grows up and covers a sign and once or twice Jay will have the road crew knock it down. So I just took these first pictures sort of the beginning of May when it started to up. And then you can see on the page seven where it continues to go beyond the sign and it also goes out into the starting into the woods. So the one below on page seven is my mesh technique. And so I only had a small piece of mesh at that point, but you can see how the knotweed has grown through the mesh. And the intent is to choke it, but it will continue to grow up. And I have been cutting most of it off, leaving a few stems to see what the final product would work like. And probably I go by now every three or four days and I'll get another growth up like that. I mean, it's incredible how quickly this stuff grows. And so I brought, just to give you uh, an idea, um, 
this is a Y zone, which has been uprooted. This was from Archer and Margo Mayers. This has been drying for probably a month, and you can still see it's trying to grow. It's trying to grow. <laughs> so I take this out, and with a roaring fire, I will burn it um, to get rid of it. But any, if, if we were to take one little bitty piece of this and inadvertently drop it, you'll get a whole new growth started. So you'll see on page eight, South Wardsboro Bridge, it's by the Lloyd's Place, which used to be the Valentine's. And he has gone into a project on his own, paying somebody to cut back, and he dries his own. I'm going to work with Dan and do a patch down on the, from his place down toward Mayer's and we'll try the, the mesh there. But you can also see that, again, it's coming very close to the pavement, and it's coming close to the bridge abutment. I put on page nine, just for your fun to look at. These are pictures from uh, just a website, but it shows you very clearly the cutaway of the bank. And did you not get a? No, I just I looked at everything. Oh, okay. Because yeah, I want to show it to Sydney. Um, I'm not sure I take it home. The underground rhizome structure. So it's uh, it's kind of scary stuff. You can see parking lot. You can see it's actually going through and out buildings. And there are pictures on that website that also show it coming through and into people's basements. Mm -hmm. Do they have any spray on it? Uh, you can. Uh, there's rodeo, Roundup, but you can't. So do with Roundup. Please. But you can't. I mean, seriously, I, I agree. Please. But you're, you're dealing with um, mainly water. Lots of this is near water sources. Yeah, very dangerous. It's just not a good thing. They say that the rodeo is is supposedly not as vicious, but even interacting with somebody from the Vermont invasive species, uh, people have tried the cutback and the, this mesh idea is a new one. And there's a group that's starting to be formed for southeast or southern Vermont, but that hasn't. Why they call them the knotheads? <laughs> hey, I kept trying to think of the knotheads. Lori, are you going to do the mesh project behind here? And so we'll come down to that. I would like to, but mesh costs money. Mm. So I can get 100 feet of mesh. Ed's had a very difficult time getting any into the store, and he would give us a discount. But 100 feet. Three feet wide is about one hundred and twenty-six dollars. You know, but well, we we have it on our bank mm -hmm. in the brook, and uh, we do get it cut back. Mm -hmm. um, we just did it um, maybe two, or three weeks ago, and then we do it again yep. at the end of August. But for a few years, it didn't look attractive, but nobody was there to see it because it was. But we put um, just the length of our property along mm -hmm. the bank. We put black plastic yep. and it didn't grow at all. You know, it just mm -hmm. smothered it because there was no light. But then there was a concern that it, and we anchored it with stones, but we went, <clears throat> we thought we didn't want that plastic to be uh, sent down the river in the middle of the winter. So we took it off. And, but that worked for a few years. Yeah, there's, there are various projects. New Hampshire has uh, wonderful best practices and the black plastic is one of it. So I was actually thinking maybe do mesh and black plastic out here. Because that's and, much cheap, cheaper. Right. Right. But it's got to be. So what I do is to cut it back, you can get antique, uh, they're called uh, linoleum knives mm -hmm. or you can get curved. This will 
cut, especially when it's younger. And then I put the mesh down and really get it down solidly. So what I'm suggesting, if the select board would like us to do that, and us is the Southeastern Vermont Watershed Alliance with me being the main one doing it. But um, <laughs> COVID, well, COVID-19, you know, we were gonna get a group going and, and we wanna do it and have people adopt a, a, adopt a patch. So I've got somebody adopting the Grimes Hill Road one. And we've got, I've got one going down in Brattleboro and this little one and the mayors have um, come on board with it and the uh, Lloyds. So does this, uh, you have any other questions? But yeah, uh, is there any money in the budget to come up with even the black plastic or? I can do it out of us. The for <coughs> okay. Yeah. The only problem I have a lot of stuff like killing stuff on the banks too much. I wonder if it wouldn't be more active to mow it more. Because you notice it don't come on any lawn or you mow your grass all the time. Well, you can't mow it. I mean, keep it between down. the stones. Well, if you keep it mowed down, then maybe it'll turn into something besides not weed, but. So the worst thing is kill everything on a bank where the water sheds off, it's going to erode. You kind of need vegetation of some sort to hold the banks. That's definitely a network. But this, this particular plant, which is known as one of the top 10 most invasive plants in the United States, kills all the natural growth. Right. And nothing will, will grow there. So the more we get it out, then the natural plants will start mm -hmm. coming back up. And mm -hmm. if we could do it on certain areas, I know there's a patch being worked on in Bellows Falls along one of their um, trails. And the idea is to keep cutting it back and plant native um, trees. Mm -hmm. As long as you just keep cutting it back and cutting it back and it could take up to five to seven years. So it's not a, something that we look at and just let go after a year. Do you want the leach field mowed down so you can do your thing on it or how do you want to do that? Well, you you can drive over that with your, well then that would be great. Okay. And then we'll just, because I was just going to be. Yeah, no, <laughs> well, how, how does the roots um, not come back? I guess if you mow it down, you're saying by putting down the mesh, it's going to prevent them from growing up, but you're still going to have a root system there. Yeah, but it, it'll put out its energy and put out its energy coming up, and it'll just but eventually, it will eventually get tired. And the black plastic actually kills the root. And <clears throat> I, I think because it's putting out and putting out its energy, it will. I mean, it, it doesn't kill them forever, you know, after right. a while it comes back, but. It does help a lot. Right. Like the sun or hibernates it for some rain and doesn't time. come to it. Yeah, so so if it's not going to get its moisture, right. Um, right now. So, Jay, you'll work on that, yep. and it's okay with the town for us to continue with any of these, and maybe in budgeting time you might think about because I I would like to send a or make up a, a card. For print a lot of these and give it to people. I know that the state will come and do Route 30, but that stuff in people's lawns, it's just, it'd be nice for them to adopt the patch and just cut it back themselves and mm -hmm. cut it back themselves. I also know that um, Joe Mariano has a special machine that can come, it's sort of like a, I don't know what he calls it, but it grinds it up and, and he he has taken care of a lot of knotweed. And he could do, you know, huge patches and would charge several of like a hundred dollars an hour. And that might be something that we could do these roadsides and Well just, that's the same thing you've got on yours, right? Town has one of them on the escalator. 
I thought I recall you said that even like if you use that blade and go somewhere else, yeah. it will carry that. So what the, the blade has to be cleaned. Yeah. So what Joe does is he he just cleans it. Just, yeah. So there's a way that we can figure out how to and but that's the Japanese knotweed update. Thank you and thank you for giving us uh, this information and pamphlet. Uh, and for your thoughts. <laughs> Take the route home. <laughs> I will take the route home. Well, my Very question will be to Jay whether or not he what he has in his budget to be able to. Uh, You're going to look at that? Carve out. <coughs> yeah, we, she's not talking a huge amount of money. I think we just come up with money for plastic or some match or something to. Because it is kind of a road, road material a road project. Yeah, so eventually, yeah. it's going to end up costing us more money if we don't do something like that. Right. I mean, yeah, lots more. I mean, it grows, it grows on uh, cement windows and whatever yeah. buildings and stuff, so. It'd be better than repainting a road. So I guess that you will add that into your budget and for future. Yep. Thank you, Gloria. You're welcome. <laughs> Good to see you. Okay. Unscheduled members of the public. Carol? Oh, um, <laughs> no, I was just here in case you guys had questions. Oh, okay. All right, great. Right. Um, so we're on to old business. Uh, the first item is that on June 22nd, we had a special meeting and we uh, voted on hiring the Vermont State Police, Vermont State Troopers for our law enforcement care for the next year from 2020 to 2021. And when Evan has contacted um, Anthony French, and you wanted to tell about that, Winnetta, please? Um, when I sent the email to Anthony, um, or to Lieutenant French, um, I let him know the, the board's um, concerns about receiving monthly statements on traffic stops, um, patrol hours, <laughs> locations, and such like that. And he didn't see that it would be a problem, and we'll try to work on that coming forward. <clears throat> okay, so you should be checking in with him to make sure we get that stuff. Yeah, right. He'll, he'll be sending it. Um, I, I told him he could send it to my email. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, the next item is <clears throat> about zoning administrator Merle Kessler. And if you remember, um, it was voted upon that Lynetta and I would interview Merle and do a um, evaluation and review, which we did do. And I think there's copies of that in your packet. And um, so he, given that we did the review, um, he's up for the three-year appointment approval. I make a motion to approve him for the next three years? Yeah. Is there a second to that? Second. OK. Any discussion? Um, how is he classified? Is he classified as an elected official? He's an appointment. He's well, appointed. appointed. He's appointed. But not as an employee. An appointed part-time? Part-time employee. Part-time. So he's not, is he considered an employee? No. He's not entitled to benefits or okay. insurances or anything like that either. Right. Well, he's an employee. He's just a part-time employee. He is an employee. Yeah, he is an employee, part time. All right. Oh. He is an employee. He is. He's a, <laughs> he's there's full time and there's part time employees. And yeah. He's a part time employee, and we're full time employees. But as an appointed person, they are considered employees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I just was questioning, you know, if he was appointed, then why did we do a, like a staff performance appraisal? 
you know. But it's always so confusing about elected, appointed, you know. Well, Shannon, yeah. and I did the, um, the last interview with him in 2017. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So he was up for it, and then. I think the difference is just what you get for benefits and holidays and things like that. I guess also if you're taking out taxes, it would make him an employee rather than. Than. He does get taxes taken out. <clears throat> so that would be classified as an employee. Yeah, the classification is really different. Mm -hmm. Like Carol and I, we don't get, because we're elected, we don't get like unemployment. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, is there anybody who can make a motion that we're all. I make a motion and Mike seconded it. Okay. All those in favor of Merle getting his three year aye. appointment, please say aye. 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 Okay, great. Well, thank you for that. And whenever you'll just inform Merle, please. I'll send him an appointment. He comes I'll in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so he'll be here tomorrow. Okay, now we have new town, new business. The first item on the agenda is the town office joint authority 1 VSA 172. I'm taking my mask off. <coughs> off of that. Um, this is a background of something that um, has come up, which uh, it seems like every uh, person who works in the building was fine with an issue of Winetta bringing her dog to work. Um, Shelly had concerns about it and ultimately called VLCT and spoke to an attorney. And she, the attorney, Susan Sennings, said that um, we should refer to the Statute 1 BSA 172, which basically says, and we can read it aloud, that um, the board um, works together to make decisions of what can be done and what cannot be done. In the meantime, um, we also had a letter that was mailed to us, and I'm going to read the letter and you have a copy of it. And this is um, about the dog, Bo, who's behind the screen right now. And it's a letter um, that was sent by two of the New Fane Select Board on June 24th. And it's the New Fane Town Office. Dear Select Board, we understand that complaints have been made by one of the Select Board members regarding the presence of the dog, Bo, in the town office. No one in the office is concerned in any way that Bo is in the office. In fact, we are happy to have him there. He is serving as a therapy dog for all of us, helping to calm us in the stressful conditions that exist at this time. We have very few other people coming into the office right now, and everyone who does has been happy to interact with him. If there was someone unhappy within his presence, we would be sure to keep him away from them. As elected and appointed officials, we welcome Bo into our lives and office. He is quiet, respectful, and affectionate. We miss him when he is not there. Please respect the independence and opinion of those of us who work in the town office and leave us to enjoy the quiet, calming presence of our friend Bo. Very truly yours, Frank Sapansky, Lister, Peter Putnam, Assistant Town Clerk, Doris Necklo, Lister, Melissa Brown, Treasurer, and Carol Hesseback, Town Clerk. And that was um, mailed to the <coughs> town hall in Jason. So, um, the issue is, you know, in addition, 
um, in your packet, you will see that actually Bo is a certified USA service dog and he has his own registration. And he also, and the handler is Winetta Powellin, and he also is a US registered service dog. And the handler is with an hour. And it says under this registration service dog, handler of this service dog ID card meets one of the requirements under ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, Fair Housing Act, Air Carrier Act, or the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. The service dog and handler qualify for full access to all public places. The name Winnetta Powling, the animal name Bo, the breed is Border Collie, the state is Vermont, and he has an ID number. Under the U.S. service dog registration, it says this certified, cert, I'm sorry, this certificate confirms Winnetta Powling has successfully registered Bo as a service dog registration, and he has an ID number. Under the federal law ADA, which is the American Disability Act, both state and local governments, businesses, and nonprofit organizations that serve the public must allow service dogs and service animals and their handlers full access to their premises where the general public is allowed to go. So um, what I'd like to do is have a motion made to accept Bo as um, an animal that can be in this office. And after it's, if the motion is seconded, we can have a conversation or questions or answers. Does anybody make a motion? I don't even think we need a motion. No, he has the right motion. to be in this building. He's a service dog, and we can't deny that. When was that put together? I see the date of June 25th, 2020. So, yes. and yes. what is the disability that we need to have? I don't it? think we need to discuss that off camera. Okay. I mean, I didn't realize that this is all new. Um, this is not something that was discussed originally um, with the board. Um, well, first of all, Winetta, um, as it was mentioned, went to each and every person who works in the Well, Marion, as per the select board has the authority and control <coughs> over town building, she's an employee. She doesn't have the right to just bring a dog in without asking the board that's where her employer under the federal that, law, American Disability Act, both state and local governments, businesses, and nonprofit well, that's, organizations that's that new. serve the public must allow service dogs. Okay, but that's that's new. That's as of June 25th, he became it's a new. service dog. Okay, so the point is, is that a, I know you're trying to make me look as though I don't have a heart about it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking at you do that way at not all. all. My concern for foremost is the liability that we have. Okay. What is the liability? If the dog bit someone, someone fell over the dog, etc. When I, I mean, would you like to respond to that? Well, I think we maybe before all like the paperwork was done, might have you know, concerns. And if he's certified and all that, you can go anywhere with that dog. That's right. Now, yeah. I mean, that's what I say. If that's certified and it's all legit and all like that, I mean, you know. Well, this is this is something new. I mean, well, it's, it's not matter. It's, it's done. But Mary, don't take offense. I'm just I'm not discussing. Yes, you are. Okay, one one at a time. Finish. And then we can all, everybody. This is all new as of June 25th. So this wasn't something that was even discussed when I, I had made a question about it. My concern is, A, is that, you know, you can't just have anybody say, oh, I'm just going to bring them in or bring this one in or my chipmunk is my support person or that, 
I just decide to have no, a little, no, it's not, Mary. Yeah, it is. No, it it's is. not. Yeah, it is. It's because not. she didn't right. just decide, excuse me. You, she I, did. She no, did. no, she didn't just decide. She went to each and every person in the building and asked how they would feel if the dog came in. Carol, is that correct? Okay, that that's fine. Okay, but the thing is, is that the select board has the authority and control over the town buildings. She's an employee. Okay, in any situation with an employee employer. That would be a, a, a situation that you would discuss, not just do. Well, I know, Shelley, I know that you feel that way, and also you have communicated to me that you wonder about my ability as a chairperson to allow this to happen. So, if you want to discuss that, we can discuss that also. But I'm not bringing your issue into no, this. No, you're bringing the whole issue up. So let's talk about everything well, that was brought up. When, when there's an employer-employee situation. Yes, and you questioned my ability as a chairperson. This is, well, to because you didn't follow the regulation as an employer. May I make a comment? Yeah. Can Juanetta speak on behalf of her decision and what was going on with registering Bo and what's happening? In, in answer to your question, on June 22nd, when we held the special meeting here to vote on the law enforcement, yeah. that was the first time that you saw Bo. Right. That was never asked why he's here or anything. So the certification was done by the 25th. Bo is three years old. He's been trained. He now has his certification papers. He is allowed to go into federal buildings. He can go on the airplane. I'm not, I'm and, not just, and medically I'm... necessary, yes. So if you had asked me why Bo was here, I could have given you the information. But you didn't want to know at that time. I don't know if it was because you had to think, you know, why is she allowed to have a dog here? Everybody else will. I would have been able to inform you that he was a service dog and a medically recommended. So that's why I now have presented you with his paperwork. As of June 25th, he was legally registered as a service dog. Right, but this was happening before yeah. June 25th. Well, she just explained it to I. Mary. And when the well, office Mary. was closed because of COVID-19, I didn't think it was going to be an issue. And it wouldn't have been an issue if you had asked me about it on the 22nd when he was here. Well, that's the only reason it's on the agenda tonight I is that to clarify okay. that he is now a certified um, so, um, certified dog. Such as well. Well, that was a special meeting. I assumed that he was here for the fact that it was just a special meeting. He happened to be here. I did realize he was here in the building every day. I'm not trying to put a, a kibosh on a service dog. That's not the point. But if everybody decided, my understanding was that you just brought him in, you know, for the evening. But then I heard that he was here every day. Well. You didn't come to the select board and ask this or discuss this with the select board. Now you're doing it. You could have asked me that night and it would have been. But what I'm telling you is I just assumed it was a one off. You assumed. Right. If we could have clarified but then this I heard, that night. But and let's, let's issue. listen one at a time. She's speaking right now. We could have clarified it that night and it would not have been an issue. I didn't have an issue at that night. I didn't have an issue. If I had an issue, I would have said something. The issue that I had was the fact that I found out that he was here full time during work hours. And that was prior to any of this service dog um, declaration. So I, my, my understanding was that you just made a decision to bring your dog in not just one time, not occasionally, but full time. And my concern is, 
A, that you're an employee and that you didn't ask your employer, and this was before the service dog situation, I work in business and I have to look at all the liabilities that go along with business. That's why I'm on the select board, okay? I, I That's the way I think. I it's not a personal issue. I understand. It's a liability issue. It's to, to protect covered. the town he is from any under, liabilities. He's covered under our farm policy, under our personal home policy. It's not a town liability because he's registered and I'm the certified handler. So if anything were to happen, it would go to you? It would. Okay. Because okay. He, is a, he is a registered dog. But prior to June 25th or whatever, and we had our special meeting and he was here and he had been here because I nobody had been really here. Nobody knew other than the people that worked in this building because we we had to make appointments even as select board members to come into the building. We didn't know that I didn't know he was here. Okay, so look at it from my my point of view. I'm I was elected to take care of the town and I take that very seriously. And there's liabilities that come along with having an animal on site. Now, you've gone and done what you legally needed to do to have him as a service dog. Correct. So I commend you for doing that. Thank you. Okay? That's, there's really no other further discussion. I'm disappointed that you didn't ask the select board initially. Okay. Um, you did. I think under the ADA, I'm not required no. to ask permission. But as of June 25th, he is now a service dog. Prior but I don't that, believe she did anything wrong because she went to each and every person who was here full time. The building was closed okay. to the general public. I understand what you're saying. The dog is covered under her insurance. However, she went to everybody that is employed here every single day and asked. Okay, the point is I understand that your point. I understand is... your point, and here we are. So let's do the bottom line. What's the bottom line? Well, the bottom line is that he, the dog can be here. Yeah, Absolutely. So, be so here. now, as of June twenty fifth, as a service dog. So end of story. Right. Moving on. Okay. Moving on. But I, I didn't like how it happened. Okay. Um, the next one, shall we? You were going to speak two weeks ago about the interim zoning measure for pandemic emergency. You haven't had your paperwork. You want to speak about it tonight? Uh, the only thing is that um, I had sent it along so that it could possibly be put up on the website. It was uh, uh, options, you know, during the pandemic on how to uh, uh, provide some economic. Uh, um, uh, opportunity for businesses in our town. Uh, there have been some businesses that have worked with outdoor tents, and um, I believe they had to get variances or something. Is that correct? Well, we right. actually voted on one of those. Right. For uh, Kent. Right. Pro. Right. For Pat Pro. Mm -hmm. So this was just basically an informational. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would, these are the things that we need as a select board to be able to provide to our business, um, businesses in town, because it's pertaining to businesses. Mm -hmm. If it was something else, I may have another uh, area, which is about demolishing unsafe buildings. These are issues, right. okay? So, if somebody had um, questions about what they could do to mitigate the, um, you know, the close down of businesses operations operationally, uh, this would give us as a board and also for the town, for the businesses in town to mm -hmm. understand. Yeah, it should go right on the website. Absolutely. And a copy out here. So I don't know what the big thing is. You know, I just sent it along to FYI. And it should so you be. had, had you sent it to us. Yes. And you asked us to put it on the agenda, which we did. And that was okay. great that you sent it to us. Okay, great. So Perfect. Okay. It's done. So the next item actually um, relates to what we were just talking about. 
And that is um, Brattleboro had announced recently what their um, requests and laws for Brattleboro are in terms of COVID right now. That um, and all businesses should business people who are working or own businesses in Brattleboro uh, to, that they are requested and to wear masks in their business and that they also are requesting and stating that the Vermont law right now is saying that in order to go into a store, a business, you should wear a mask. So the question came up in the uh, reformer and then Winetta brought it up also uh, because there was some paperwork about that in terms of should the uh, should Newfane request from all Newfane businesses to follow these COVID-19 safety procedures, such as masks required. I believe Dover just did that as well. I think it should be up to the people that own the business. Each individual business should decide. I'm not a big fan of this mask. I don't wear it unless I have to. I mean, they should be up to the business. They want you to wear a mask in their place. Make a sign. I mean, you put it on. If not, you don't go in. If not, you can go in or whatever. I mean, I don't, think we, I don't think we ought to be making up new laws like this all around. I mean, they got enough things to to watch right now. Well, I do notice that there are two different kinds of signs that are up in businesses around here. Some say, we request, we would request that, means you have that you wear, no. Recommended is. Recommend, I'm sorry, recommending that you wear a mask. Doesn't mean that you have leaves to, it up to you. Request, you have. Right. Um, and then there are other signs that say it's required. So there are two different signs that I've noticed on businesses here. I think, like I said, you know, now. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. You just start on here. Yeah. I mean, the state sends them all that stuff, anyways. I don't think we've got to be making new laws and stuff for from the board of select men to follow it. I mean, okay. we can strongly encourage folks to wear masks in public places. But businesses, I think it's up to them to okay. make it a requirement or not, okay. or a recommendation. So, um, did somebody make a motion? I mean, I tell you the truth, sitting here tonight with this goddamn thing on. I mean, my glasses are steaming up because you're sitting here breathing up the son of a bitch. And, you know, I don't have that problem when I don't have it on my face. We need oxygen we need tanks. Huh? We need oxygen well, tanks. I was say, I mean, and I tell you the truth, oh, I mean, you talk to a lot of people in hospitals and stuff like that. These things ain't good for you. If you're healthy, they're not good for you. You know, because you're, you're breathing carbons out that you're sucking back in and out of your face all day long. And they tell you that it's not good to wear that mask all the time. And, um, well, I mean, but I'm still, like I said, sitting here tonight, you know, so these damn things on, they get fogged up on you. I know. So, I mean, everything you're breathing out is going to hurt along your forehead, face. I'm not fond of the damn thing, but. So is anybody who can make a motion? I will make a motion that we strongly recommend that you wear masks when you feel you need to wear masks with people. <laughs> However, I also add to that motion that we let businesses make that recommendation or request on their own. Okay. Amen. Is there I'll a second, second to that? I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? So what you just said that it's up to the businesses to do it. Right, but and I'm also still, saying as a person, you should make that decision to yourself. Well, as I said, the person wants to wear it, wear it. And then when you, you make let businesses choose whether they want to recommend, require, or not open business. Can I just have a clarification? You're saying businesses. What about public places like town office? Is what? it required? You're a business. Yes, so it's a business. No, required. We're a public place. We yeah. don't. We don't sell a product. We provide a service. So we are a public building. I think if you're in here and you maintain your distance. <clears throat> you have your own I rules. It's what whatever the rules are for the business or the operation or the service or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if, if somebody says you have to wear a mask in their business, that's what they've required. Then if you don't wear a mask, they'll throw you out. Right. So if the select board is in charge of the town office, yeah. what is the select board's decision as to whether we require people to wear masks? When they come in, yes. That's, that's what we've been doing, isn't it? 
Well, that's the rule. Well, yeah, it's posted. Yeah, we have the sign. It's posted. So whatever right. we've okay. been doing, that's what we're going to continue to okay. do. Because we didn't have until that until policy back. Right. We adopted the policy. I just wanted to confirm that yeah. that's what you're saying. That the public offices are required, but personal mm -hmm. businesses, fat pro, Lufay Market, it's, whatever it's personal is. choice. Yes. Okay. Other businesses have their own. Okay. Okay. So can, um, if there's no further discussion, let's vote on it, please. All those in favor of voting on the motion that it will be up to each individual business to decide if they request or require masks, and this is for the town of Newfane, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so that's what will happen. We are down now to review and sign town tax rates, and that's over here. Um, this was given to the select board by uh, Doris and there's copies for everybody to look at, and then we have to sign one, we have to sign the original. So can someone explain what this is all about? Do you want to comment on this? I know you have been talking about the, the situation. The the Thank you. So the first one, the approved expenditures from Article 6 and Article 9, that was the ones that we voted on at town meeting for the expenditures of the town offices and Jay's department, the highway, for that $1,533,534. And then Article 7 was the capital expenditures, which you said it was capital needs. That was also voted on in March at the town meeting of $265,895. And then Article 8 was the capital reserves that we also voted on, $123,500. Then the anticipated revenue was all the state revenues and interest and all the different things that I had listed out that we'll be receiving in from everywhere. That, so we subtracted that from all the expenditures Mm -hmm. And you're left with a million six hundred fifteen thousand two hundred eighty-two dollars. And then you take the grand list, which is what Doris, you know, puts together for all the properties. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you divide that one million six hundred fifteen thousand by that two million four hundred eighty-six, and that's how you get that tax rate. You want to read what the tax rate is? Point six four nine six. Is that increase or decrease? That's an increase. It was 0.5943 last year. Is that with the school budget or anything? We do not have a school budget yet. Mm -hmm. So, so we need to vote on accepting the tax rate. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No, please, can't change it. <laughs> okay, so the tax rate has been accepted. This is an original form that we each have to sign. So I'll pay and this is not going to change. This will not change. The only thing you're waiting on now is the school tax rate. Okay. And then once we get the school tax rate, we can send the tax bills out. Okay. And we're going to send them out on and time. And are we going to be late as we had discussed? We're not going to make them late. We're going to make them on time and adjust the ones that we need to. Because we've got enough homes to bring gates in to make it worthwhile. Otherwise, it's just going to muck up everything worse. Keep it on schedule. Yeah. And thank you for all your hard work. Yeah, yeah. really.
Okay, the next item is possible projects. And um, Joe, and you had uh, sent copies, not, yeah, you sent copies of this. Yes, I did. And I don't know if this is something you'd be interested in um, proposing that this could be a project that we take on, or if anybody else has an idea for a future project, this is the time for us not to do anything about it, but just to discuss for a minute or two anything that might be coming up in the next several months that you'd like to see happen. Okay, well, can we just discuss about like what this is about? Sure. I would ask people just to read through it. Mm -hmm. um, we do have issues within the town um, with unsafe buildings mm -hmm. that we have been trying to handle. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that um, there's not a whole lot that has happened with certain buildings um, that need to be demolished. This is a court affirms town's order to demolish unsafe building. Um, and this was a decision in the case of Donald Bishop versus the town of Springfield. And um, this may involve literal groundbreaking, but it's not particularly groundbreaking in a figurative sense, it says. Towns have long had the authority, using various mechanisms, to order a dangerous or unsafe structure to be demolished. In this case, the court reinforces one way to order de demolition successfully, which should reassure towns that are following the proper process to do so. So, um, and this is from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, the VLT, VLCT that we refer to is like our go-to agency to help us um, handle municipal business operations. So this was in the town of Springfield, um, and uh, it goes through uh, how the town of Springfield had an ordinance that defines what constitutes a public nuisance, provides uh, procedures for taking action for its abatement or removal, the ordinance is specifically authorized by Vermont law and was adopted and incorporated in the town code in accordance with its governance uh, charter. A complaint submitted to the select board by the town's fire chief claimed that the Bishop's fire damage building was unsafe in violation of the town's building code. So it's, it's how we would set up, and I'm not sure if this is in place or that everyone knows um, you know, I don't think we have anything really in place, but we have people in place. But it's about um, giving them the authority to move forward on properties. Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking the board to take this and review it over, and let's consider looking at how we can handle some of these buildings that are being, um, you know, that really need to be taken down. They're a nuisance to the community for so many different reasons. You know, we have rats crawling out of buildings. We have people living in buildings that shouldn't be living in buildings, either by virtue of they don't have the money to upkeep that building, or they've been vacated, and they don't care who is living in them and it's causing a nuisance to the community and safety issues and concerns. Well, I appreciate that you sent this to us, and I think it's a good suggestion that we look through this and see what can be done. Is that agree upon? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. OK, yeah. great. Thank you. So, so I yeah. guess, yeah, so in this possible projects, I'll be um, looking to look at past things that we've looked at and sort of put on a back burner <coughs> and try to keep it moving um, before the select board for action. Okay. That's okay. great. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, we don't, the only correspondence we had this week is the one that I read uh, from the employees and of the new thing at town office. We have no other correspondence. And so we are up to pay orders. And at that, this point, um, we're going to say goodnight to everybody. 
and be safe and be well. And we will see you on June, no, I'm sorry, July 20th at 6 p.m. And thank you all for being here tonight.